Hello, welcome to this Monday's edition of Happy Maths Hour. Tony will be joining me any second now and we are playing games. Here for the next two or three couple of weeks, we will be playing games every day in the description. You'll find a link to the Facebook Insect page, which is facebook.com forward slash Insect. Look for the spelling. Just click on the link in the description. Every day of the week, there'll be a little activity on there. And so what we're here for is to, Tony has arrived. What we're here for, and we will do that straight after the break, is we're here to help children and parents to succeed in maths. And, and Tony, Tony Beard and my, my partner in crime on this is one of the world's leaders in this area and so yes i know i know she's all getting blush now <laughs> and my lighting's not very good i'm afraid tony but we'll deal with it so after the break we're going to be playing games so tell everybody about it get them to come on down i'm hoping chelsea's watching chelsea says she'll be watching and um, so we're going to go to the break do our jingle and get ready to play some games all you're going to need is a piece of paper and a pen and your brain brain's good switch on your brain and I'm just looking for the jingle which has disappeared on me again. And I know it's here somewhere. Oh, there it is. See you after the break. Welcome back to Mindset Monday on Relax Radio with Caroline Ainsley and Tony Bearden. Now, this is being recorded during the holiday season, which means that all we're doing is playing games. So if you've got any young, um, and these games are suitable for seven to, well, seven plus, so adults can, will enjoy the games. And they're all focused on learning and learning maths in a powerful way. Tony, what would you like to say about how the games help? Well, yes. Hello, everybody. Hello. We are, well, it's holiday season. And when we get to term time and the children, or some of the children, most of the children are back in school, then we will go to other learning activities. But now we're producing a different game every day. And this week, starting today, we've got something called the check it game and caroline you said seven plus but we've got a game that's suitable even for four-year-olds oh, are we going to play that today as well? well it's all about that one is just as long as they can begin to count up to about well most about 20 at the moment very much as they can count then they can play this game fantastic i'm ready okay so, Caroline, have you got the, um, we want to be able to show the people who are uh, able to watch it. Some people are listening to this program on the radio and uh, we'll describe what's what's going on. We'll describe the game, but uh, some people can watch it. So Caroline's got some slides that uh, she can put up. I want to share on the Facebook group, uh, oh, which I, which is not in the description. Oh my goodness! One of these doesn't days matter, I'm... Caroline. It'll all be on the Facebook afterwards, so don't I'm don't worry about that. Posting it now, so that it's been shared. Okay, now, right? Okay, their slides are right here. So you want slide number one? Slide number one. I feel as though I'm I'm on one of those. Um, Competition program. I mean, as, as we, Caroline isn't in the studio, um, so as we are um, having to do everything ourselves, all the technology, um, we, uh, <laughs> we're perhaps a little slow. Um, when I think Caroline's had one session in the studio, but 
She's now <laughs> in Spain, actually, <laughs> and I'm in and I'm in England. Okay. So, Caroline, we, we sh usually we can see that slide in the background, um, and uh, ourselves, uh, our faces still appear. But let, leave the slide on, um, and what you see is a triangle. Now, imagine a triangle with with uh, circles or discs at the corners, and halfway along each side, there's a box, uh, a, a rectangular box, okay? Now, this is a, a puzzle or a challenge, if you like. And just to get so give everybody the idea that on the, in, on the vertices, at the corners, if you like, of the triangle, there are numbers and maybe there are some blank boxes or a box with a question mark in it. And on the uh, middle of the edges, there's another box and the number in there has to be the sum of the numbers at the corners or at the vertices. So for each edge, the number in the middle of the edge is the, you add up the numbers at the vertices, okay, at the corners. So what you see there is at the bottom, um, one, 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 um, one vertex, okay, and nine, 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 Nine nine on and the other. What should go in the middle? If you add one 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 and nine 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 nine, what do you get? Okay. I'm just making a copy of that. So so if I just write one 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 one, and we've got two 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 two. Oh my goodness, we've got five twos, four ones, and then we've got. Four nines, what nine 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 nine, and that I'm just drawing that, and then we can get four ones added to four, four nines, one thousand one hundred and eleven added to nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. Oh, okay. So you're giving you're giving the solution. Okay. Right. Oh, I'm, no, no, I'm not giving the solution. You're going to give the solution, Caroline. We're doing this to to explain the game. I mean, it isn't a game yet. But you have to know what to do, okay? Oh dear, my lighting. I have to do better for next week. Okay, there Caroline, you go. they can see the slide. We want you to okay. give the answers. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. One thousand one hundred and eleven added to nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine. Big okay. numbers here. Add them up. Okay, right, right, right. Add them up. Add them up. And I'm hoping Chelsea's watching. I think I know you can add nine hundred. 9,999 to what? Okay, so that's okay. And that's wait a minute. Oh dear. Now, at the in the middle of the other side, along with the 9,999, um, there is in the middle 22,222. Now, actually, we'll just leave this for a little while and see if you can work it out, because we're not gonna hurry to give you the answers. We're going to see if you can work it out. Shall we look at slide number two, Caroline? Have, you, have everyone got that written down? Get it written down, and um, that there is a link in the description. I'm just going to turn that off for a second. There is a link in the description to this game, so if you didn't manage to get it written down, go to the description and click, it's the Check It game. Click on that, and then you've got all of these slides and all of these the, the game describes so you can play it um later if you can't play um, it. caroline it would be ah right now this is how the game works okay um you see the same numbers appearing there and but they're sort of in the background because now we've got the rules for the game I think we definitely have to read those rules, Tony, because... I'm going to, of course. I'm now, if you can read, while I'm doing that, Caroline, if you can get this so that we can appear on the side or something, as, as it was, as, as we've had it in the past, we've always been able to see, our, everybody's been able to see us and the slides in the background. Okay. Tony, Tony, that's because Harry does it, and oh, I don't have the ability okay. to... That I have to have to actually create them very differently, and he does something magical. So if you're there, Harry, if you could 
put these slides on in your wonderful way. That would be fantastic. Okay, so you start with an empty frame. And you take turns to fill in numbers of an agreed type. Now, the point about this is that it, you can have this game with addition or subtraction. Now, we've talked about addition, but you could have it with subtraction, multiplication or division, and you could go backwards. We'll explain, we'll explain that in a few minutes. So the thing about this is you start with the empty frame and you can put, suppose we decide on whole numbers, we don't need to have big numbers in the thousands. We can have very small numbers. We can agree that all the numbers that we put in the in the at the corners are going to be less than ten, even, and then that makes it very easy for young for younger children. And you take it in turns to fill in the numbers, and you have to agree the type of number. And let's say it's going to be very, 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 very simple. That is, all the numbers on the corners are numbers less than 10. And the number in the middle of the edge has got to be, let's say, we are playing with addition. So one version would be small numbers, small whole numbers, and adding what's on the, what's on the corners. Now, you... You take it in turns, this is a game for two players, and it can be played with two teams. And you win if your opponent can't go or makes a mistake. You win a put, you win. That's the end of that game. And, of course, if you get to right to the end and everything's checks and everything's correct, you both get a point. And then you go on playing until somebody gets five points and, and they're the winner. You can even... This is not so much a very competitive game. It's a let's do it together and see if we can do it, helping each other and not making any mistakes. So the numbers in the boxes are the sums of the numbers at the vertices in the simplest possible game. And you can play it with any operation, addition, subtraction, multiplication or division. You can play it with whole numbers positive and negative numbers if you want to, and you can play it with fractions. So it's a very versatile game. And once you get used to it, you can play it without writing anything down. But we suggest that you draw the triangle and play it. You only need pencil and paper. Draw it with your pencil and paper and um, see, you know, see how you get on. Now, Choose something that's the right level for your group. And if you've got children and grown-ups playing, let the children decide whether it's going to be whole numbers, just positive numbers, and whether they're going to add the numbers or multiply them. Now, why do we want to play a game like this? Well, you've been hearing me talking about it. And one of the big reasons for playing games is to have fun and to learn. But another big reason is to develop some skills, life skills, transferable skills. So that's really important. Caroline, what do you think of skills? What do I think of skills? Mm. Mathematical skills. Absolutely. All sorts. I think all no, life skills, the skills that don't just apply to mathematics. You see, we talk there about... I've been talking about those in, in Mindset Monday. Um, the, the, the skills that we learn in mathematics are skills that enable us to be successful in life no matter what we choose to do in life. It doesn't matter if we want to dig holes for a living. It doesn't matter if we want to have an ecological farm in the middle of nowhere. The skills you learn, problem solving, reasoning, decision making, just generally thinking, just the, the ability to think and make decisions. And these are all skills that you learn by doing mathematics, real mathematics, like what you like what you do, Tony. Oh, well, you learn it through doing with playing these games. So I'm right. suggesting that if you're at home, just a, a few minutes now and then. Um, if the children really enjoy it, take it to, you know, 
do more of it, playing all sorts of games, board games, um, games where you throw dice and move counters on a board, things like snakes and ladders, um, card games. They all develop these transferable life skills. Um, being able to play and be a good sport and not get terribly upset if you don't win, but to keep trying to think in order to work out strategies that you um, are going to make you more likely to win, that sort of um, thinking can be applied to all sorts of things you have to do in life. Um, it's not what you know, it's what you can do with what you know. And behind a lot of these games, there is a lot of um, skill in learning to use your mind and think about the problem, persevere if it doesn't, you don't succeed at first. I mean, for example, if you keep losing, then you get really quite cross with yourself and think, well, why is, that, why is that person I'm playing with winning and I'm losing? They must have, if I try a bit harder, if I think what strategies they're using and I try to think what strategies I can use to win, then I, I might succeed in bidding them. I shall probably be able to do something I couldn't do yesterday. And so the desire to win might give you some additional incentive to learn more and develop new strategies. I'm going to go for a break, Tony, and then straight after the break, I'm going to, you, you, you reminded me of a very quick story to tell on that. Right after okay. the break. With See you soon, Tony. everybody. And competition and how that can be done positively. Welcome back to Happy Maths Hour with Tony Bearden and Caroline Ainsley. We are playing games from here till the, the beginning of January. And the idea being that the more games you play, the more strategy, the better, the better you become at being strategic, because these games are all strategic games. The games are starting from low, low age, so that the activities that Tony's created, you can start at low entry and, and go up to a high level. And the story I was thinking about, Tony, was that competition, competition can encourage you to develop strategies. Like, well, why aren't I winning? And help you think and, 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 and learn for yourself, work it out for yourself. And it's something that I've been working out. Um, I've got six-year-old grandson and seven, no, they're both six still. Um, and they have had a real problem with competition with losing. Oh, my goodness. As you can imagine, drama, they lose. And what I've, the, 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 my, the game changer that I've discovered recently was, to put it this way, you are helping each other become better. You are helping your competition become better. So you've got to be as good as you can be in order that your competition can improve and they've got to be as good as they can be to help you improve so it's it's actually the competition is in its purest form is there to improve the competitors it's not there for one to win and one to lose it's there and like the, the olympics exactly that is exactly true the people that keep beating the world records aren't beating the world records because nobody's ever nobody's ever run as nobody's ever attempted it before over the years people keep keep getting better and better and better and better because their competition keeps getting better otherwise they wouldn't be they would not have achieved what they've achieved in this day and age that's it i'm done 
<laughs> okay, so what I suggest you do is you go to the Aiming High um, website and you will find lots of, uh, there is a, what we call an inclusion and home learning guide. Um, inclusion means it should include everybody in your household um, who's interested in just playing a game. Um, you should be able to find a game that's suitable for five, five year old for five year olds um, and older people can play with them. Uh, and we're all within this check it collection and you should you should also find games that will will challenge and make the 17, 18 year olds think too. And uh, well, what, it's, what it will do for these young people is get them to practice. Now, <laughs> you, everybody can remember, I'm sure, who's been at school, because everybody has, if they've been at school, they've learnt maths. And you can, I'm sure you can remember those textbooks where you've got lots of examples. They're called drill and practice. And by, keep, by it repeatedly doing the same sort of thing again and again and again, you get to find, you can remember how to do it, you get to, do, to have in your head these relationships between numbers, which are called number bonds, and you get a sense of what would be the right answer and quite quickly you can um, work it out. Well, drill and practice is terribly boring, you know. And um, it, I think children have sometimes found maths lessons quite, quite boring. I can remember a son, one of my sons, um, we said, my we said to him, oh, you finished that maths homework very quickly, Luke. And he said, well, I've done the last one and it's easy, but it, all the others are the, the same. And I don't see why I should do all these questions, which are all the same with different numbers in them, but they're all the same. And I, I just found things to get a little bit difficult, as you, more difficult as you go towards the end. So I did the last one and that should be good enough. And he was quite right, really. Um, but you will have already, if you've been listening in the earlier part of this um, hour, you'll have realised that by playing this game, they're practising doing, adding up numbers, numbers that you've chosen. So if they're small children, you choose small numbers. And the first example we um, showed you was in thousands and the answer came up to tens of thousands. Now. At about the age of eight or nine in most countries, children are supposed to be able to add up two numbers that are in the thousands and getting answers in the tens of thousands. That's supposed to be something they do with pencil and paper maybe. Um, but it's not an important skill in the sense that when they're grown up, they're going to have to do those sorts of things because unlike when I started um, teaching, and when I was at school, long, but even before that, um, a computer was a human being. Nowadays, you know what a computer is, and your phone is a very good little computer, very powerful. And um, so people don't need to do calculations, but they do need a sense, a number sense. And also, there's all these tests in schools, and you want your children to be able to do well. So some drill and practice in, a, in the form of a game will be painless. You know, a sugar coating to something which does actually help you to remember the number bonds. And multiplication tables, oh, Caroline, aren't multiplication tables something that kids really hate? And if they don't know those tables, they'll be much slower when it comes to doing, uh, applying the maths and, and doing the sorts of um, questions that they're going to be asked to do in examinations and they're going to just have to take much longer and perhaps not even get it right. Whereas if they learnt the, those multiplication tables um, when they were uh, uh, in primary school age and they just become second nature, then everything after that becomes much easier. So you can play this check-it game with um, numbers up to 
six, if you like, in the in the corners of your triangle, the vertices, and have the number in the, that you put in the box in the middle of each side, the what you get when you multiply the product, it's called, when you multiply the two numbers. And, it, and if you do that, you'll be practicing your multiplication tables. And I said, you know, start with one to six. You can start with one to three, if you like, and just use your two times table and your three times table if you're working with six and seven year olds. And then you can gradually start, you decide. So you, you, in this game, you make it fit you. You don't just take a game and play it and see if you can get on with it. You take this game and you make it fit you, your group. So you choose what numbers you're going to work with and you choose whether you're going to add them, subtract them, multiply them and divide them. Well, and so we might have some parents who are very hesitant themselves. I certainly have I'm tutoring um, one, one particular boy whose mother really doesn't want to engage. In fact, over the summer, I was helping a young, um, a, a, a lovely young girl whose mother, again, didn't want to engage. So it's not, it's, it's start, if, if you aren't sure about what you're doing and you're a grown up or an older person or an old, older child helping a younger child, perhaps, Go with what you can do and the, to learn together and you yourself will learn and grow by doing it. And, and one of the things that uh, you, you, one of the comments you made, Tony, I was, it was, I never learned my times tables and I couldn't ever see the point in it. And I certainly never learned number bonds. What were they when I encountered, when I started doing what I do now and people talk about number bonds, I'm like, what are number bonds? Oh my goodness. When I, finally realize how helpful they are. They literally, they help you do addition of large numbers. They help you do multiplication. They help you, especially the knowing your times tables really helps you with that dreaded algebra that so many people fear. That actually I used to get, I, I understood algebra, but I always used to get the answers wrong because I wasn't fluent with my times tables and my number bonds. And so, if you want to give your young learners the best head start you can, then playing these games with them so that they have the fluency that when they, when algebra arrives as named algebra and the X's and the Y's, it won't be intimidating to them because they've got the number fluency. And that number fluency is really critical. And, and, and number fluency is very really useful when you go shopping. Especially if you haven't got much money with you and you want to know if you can, you know, how much how much you can buy for this limited amount of money that you that you can afford to spend. <laughs> I mean, you've got to be able to add up the costs of things and and know what it's what the total is going to be. Otherwise, you'll be embarrassed at the till when you come to the checkout and and it's more than you can more than you can afford. And you have to say, oh, I won't have that. You know. <laughs> So, um, and children, if children, ha if some, some children have pocket money, if they give, somebody gives them a present, they've got a certain amount of money to spend, then uh, it, they can budget it. And oh, they can only do this, you know, working out the numbers if they know, it, it, well, they're going to do it easily and comfortably and get it right, if, if they know these simple number bonds and it's just simple things like seven plus eight is 15 without having to count on from eight nine and then we'll count on your fingers it's knowing that six plus nine is 15 you know again the same total um it's having this so that you know it you don't have to think about it i'm not sure if that the, the, the coin argument is going to hold much longer tony because i think the world really is moving to plastic especially with the <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, Carolina, are we ready for our jingle? <laughs> yeah, but I just want to say that it is important that they don't spend more than they've got, even if it's on a plastic card. And that is really important because you can get yourself into big trouble very quickly if you spend more than you've got with your plastic. Uh, after the jingle, what are we going to do after the jingle, Tony? After the break? Oh, well, we're going to we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to show a few more games. Uh, well, along uh, in this check it collection, and say 
where they're going to find these. And uh, we've got a few more things to, yes. And of course, then we've got some ideas about reflections for the, the coming new year and making new year resolutions and the like. Ooh, ooh, mathematical resolutions, I like it. Uh, no, learning resolutions. I mean, facing up to life resolutions. <laughs> life skills resolutions. Yes. Right. After the break, we are going to be playing the game, the Check It game, some more in different ways. See you after the break. Welcome back to Happy Maths Hour with Tony Bearden and myself, Caroline Ainsley. Every Monday from 5 to 6 London time, we uh, do things that really help people, young learners, learn mathematics in a way that will serve them for life. Now, we are doing nothing but games. These are programs that, these, this program is all about games for the next couple of weeks because it's, because it's um, holiday time in lots of parts of the world. And right now we are playing the Check It game and over to Tony with the next instalment of the Check It game. Caroline, how about looking at the letters? This isn't maths, this is um, logical thinking. How about the Check It game with letters? Well, that's fractions, where are the letters? Oh, ah, here we are. Okay, right. Now, at the vertices, corners of this triangle, we've got the words tiger goat and rat okay I played this one before tony ah so i thought well we could do the same thing with same sort of thing with letters now what do you notice about the letters in tiger and goat have they got any letters in common yes hmm. i can what see are, them in common what are they Okay, you want me to say it? Yes. You see a G and a T in common with tiger and goat. So on each edge, the words have exactly two letters in common and describe an object with a common characteristic. Okay. Well, so we've tiger and goat. Well, they're living things. If we just say okay. we must be talking about living things, can you, uh, that makes it easy. But if we if we talk about actually creatures which you know have four legs and <laughs> that's also something true about the tiger and the goat. Now what you've got to put in the middle there, and this is something that you you know you can do, you can imagine doing um, with just a pencil and paper, or even doing it in your head. You've got to find who can be the first in the in the, uh, in this party we're playing this game who can be the first to find a word which has a g and a t in it and only two letters in common and is about some sort of living thing or animal mm. c. t and g a, a, a gat isn't an animal is it <laughs> 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 well, I tell you what, we've got a chat line. So what we're going to do here is oh, to... Got... Let's see if anybody's... Hello, God... God... Godfrey Basuta. Hello, Godfrey Basuta. Can you come up with... We need answers. We need an animal, a living thing, I beg your pardon, a living thing that has a G and a T in it. In the name. Okay. <laughs> so, so you hope... If, if you're if you're watching this, you can see the slide. So a tiger and a goat both have the letter G in them, and both have the letter T. And can you come up with another living thing that has a t in its name a T and a G? Now on the 
uh, we've got a triangle. So imagine a triangle. If you're listening to the radio, imagine a triangle. And at the other vertex, there's the word rat. Now, the what's the common letter, Caroline, between goat, two letters between goat and rat? Well, those are, that's A and T, and I've got an easy one for that one. I've got an easy one, so I'm not going to spoil it. See if anyone can give us an easy one. Anyone. It doesn't have to be an easy one. Ooh, um, shall I give them a clue? I can think of an insect. Was yours an insect, Caroline? No, mine wasn't an insect. Oh, well, a lot. Much easier, perhaps, than the T and the G. But if you're listening, maybe, um, and and you, you can fill, you can talk to us on the chat line, you can give an answer. So we want... So we want a second a second creature that has an a, an A and a T in its name, like goat and rat. Okay. Oh, one that has. Oh yes, there's another. This ah, it's a very easy four letter four four letter four um four legged animal that has a very common one that's got an A and a T in it. Okay, and then what about tiger and rat? Because I've got one. Got it's not four legged though. Does it have to be four legged? Any number, any no, no. It can just another creature, another living thing. I've got a living thing that with a T and an R, but I haven't got a G and a T yet. What about the T and R? Shall we tell people what? Will you tell people what you think? Well, I've got trout. Oh wow! Yes, <laughs> trout. Um, there's there's lots of there's lots of um, word uh, creatures I can. I can think of turtle too. Oh, turtle! Of course. I thought mm. of one with a T. Now I think it's a. I think it's an animal. I think I spelled it correctly. A G and T. I think so. But which has a G in it and has a T in it, and it doesn't have the other letters because they have. And if we're playing this strictly, on the edge, we only should have two letters in common between the oh, wait a minute only oh so trout doesn't count because it's got two t's oh well mm, i think i think it does because it, it it we don't allow it we don't allow it to have an um so, well didn't have two t's for example with goat and rat we mm. could have we could have Cat is the obvious one, isn't it? Oh, I didn't think of cat. I've got bat and ant. Oh, bat and ant. Okay, so there's lots there. But um, one for tiger and goat with a G and T doesn't work because it's got three letters in goat. It takes three letters from goat, so it, it won't work. And it's got three letters from tiger, so that won't work. So that that um, is no good. We've got to. I've got to keep thinking. <laughs> Just keep thinking. I haven't got the answer yet. Well, there you go. So we don't we don't have to supply answers to everything. We want to keep we want to give you a puzzle. Now keep keep keep, keep in your mind. We're, we'll put this up on Facebook and then people can fill in their answers there, there on Facebook. You see, what we do is every single day. We have a new game in in December, and uh, and through to the new year when children start to go back to school, and um, this check it match letters game will go up. Uh, and where do we? Where am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the Facebook page for AIMSEC, and it's AIMS AIMSEC SA South Africa, and there and also on. The other page that Caroline um, publishes lots of, and all Caroline's friends publish lots of amazing stuff on, is called Making Maths Fun for Kids of All Ages. Uh, and either page you will find that there are, um, I'm putting them up on the Facebook page for AIMSEC and sharing them with the Making Maths Fun page. <laughs> That's not um that's not a pay a page, Tony. It's a group, so you can join the group making mass fun for kids of all ages. And Tony always every day on the AIMSEC page that's now on the, the it's facebook.com forward slash A I M S S E C 
essay. It's in the description. If you're just listening to the radio show, go to the Relax Radio page and click on the description, and you'll, that'll take you to, to the AIMSEC page. Well, it's coming along on the bottom of this um, uh, stream, uh, the URL www.facebook.com AIMSEC essay. Now, AIMSEC is different an, to looking at the page. Yes, AIMSEC is where you'll find all these ideas and uh, resources. It's uh, an organization in, that's based in, in South Africa, but it's spreading around. All this, these materials are being used all around the world. It's an organization where we work with teachers and help the teachers who are working in the poorest of the poor communities. You don't see poverty like this in Europe. You really have to imagine something. If you think people are poor in this country, you have to imagine something a lot more, a lot worse for people who, this is their lives, and we want these children, the children, to be able to get out of this poverty trap and have a bill, and because they get a good education, have a chance of getting a better job in and having a chance of getting a job at all, because part of the problem is unemployment. Um, and so what we do is we work with teachers. We, we're not out in those schools ourselves. We're a group, it's, we're a charity, and we, get, and we empower the teachers to give the children a better education. And those teachers are teaching very often, I mean, the average class size is 60, twice the size of um, school classes in, in Europe. In, some, in many countries, in this sort of school, the average class size is in the 50s or 60s, and some are even bigger than that. And all they have is probably a chalkboard. So we specialize. Bangladeshi listeners as well remember that. So if um, we can encourage them to contact us if they they know of schools in Bangladesh that uh, would like to um, so to, well, to benefit yeah. from this. Yeah. Yes, and the we specialize because because there aren't there isn't money to buy resources in making learning materials from junk, the sort of things that people throw away. So empty containers <clears throat> that you will have in your, perhaps have in your kitchen, that you had some sort of food stuff in a box. When, when it's all used up, then we, you can use the box and you can use the cardboard, scrap paper, newspapers, magazines. There's a, there's a bit of basic kit that's useful to have. It's useful to have a ruler and it's useful to have uh, some uh, scissors to cut up. Uh, to cut the shapes um, and some string. But th those sorts of things don't cost very much. And uh, you will find that when we're suggesting games or when we're suggesting serious learning uh, in school, we're, 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 we're very interested in the sort of learning where you're not just learning a few maths facts that you can be tested on, but you're learning how to use what you know in real life to solve problems and um, you're going to be more employable if you can persevere if the problem is a bit difficult, if you can communicate your ideas to other people. These are the sort of skills that we're, that we're concentrating on and that will give children wherever they go to school, however fortunate the family on the community or however poor the, the, it's, it's common to all, actually, that those sort of life school skills will help you get better, they get on better in your um, life as you're growing up and, and in adult life. So um, that's AIMSEC. <laughs> now, and I'm 58 and I'm, I'm still always learning, always be learning. And they're helping me now. They're helping me with my thinking skills. They're helping me with my mathematical knowledge and my, my confidence. And they're helping me with my, my thinking power and my analyzing power. They help. So there's, it, they, they're there for everybody. And it's hugely powerful. And I encourage you to, to use it and to tell, tell us about if you have disadvantaged communities that you're aware of as well. 
Now, if you're going to play this game with very small children, um, just instead of writing the number, just put that number of dots in the box so they can count the dots and just the small, small numbers and they can play the check it game just adding up what's on the uh, corners you can call them or vertices is the right name for the triangle um, and putting what you get if you count all the ones on the vertices all the dots putting that number of drawing that number of dots in the middle um, so you know that, that makes it accessible to very small children who can who are just learning to count and you can help them with that okay so, after the break, we're also, we'll tell you about our YouTube channel, the Tony and I YouTubers, and we're going to talk about our New Year's resolutions. And <laughs> what, what's going to be important as we move from 2020 to 2021? See you after the break. Could we have the slide, the first slide with fractions on it? Um, this is the, uh, uh, yes, the check it game with fractions. Now you'll see that um, on the left there, we've got addition and we've got three fifths on one vertex and a third on another vertex. And between them, if you add up three fifths and a third, you get 14 fifteenths. And then at the bottom, you've got a third and a half. And if you add those up, you get five six. And on the other side, you've got three fifths and a half. And you get the top heavy fraction, then 11 over 10. And you can play the game the same way, exactly the same way with fractions. And you can multiply the fractions, which is actually a bit easier than adding the fractions. And there, for example, if you multiply one third and three fifths, you get three fifteenths, or, well, you may see it right away, you get one fifth. Um, and you can, if you're able to see the slide, you'll see the other multiplications of fractions. Now, once the children are able to work with fractions, practicing a sort of drill and practice of being able to concentrate on, well, let's say multiplication is easier here, so concentrate on the multiplication first, and then when you've got that really, you know, so, oh, this is easy, I can do this, I can do this, you can move across and do the addition of, fra of the fractions too. And on the Aiming High website, there are dozens of games that help you to get used to fractions, um, to get friends friendly, make friends with fractions and feel that fractions are your friends and not your enemy. So you can also work with decimals and you can work with the older children. They can even work with powers or exponents. So there's all sorts of different versions of this game. Before the break, we looked at playing it with words, and uh, it's just a general pattern uh, of um, having what these two, th what do we do with these two things at the corners, at the vertices, and what should we put between them along the, mid mid the edge of the size, um, sides? And actually, if we've got something in the middle of the edge, in the, in the box in the middle, and at one end of that edge, at the vertex, and we are have to find out what to put in the the other vertex at the other end of that edge. We are working backwards in a sense because if we're going to add up the two numbers to get the total in the middle, we have to sub do some subtraction, which is going backwards or doing the inverse. So there's all sorts of 
variations of this game and it's teaching all sorts of ideas about number and you can do it with algebra as well. So you'll find all this and it'll be coming up this week. Every day there'll be a different Check It game. And if you can think of different uh, answers for the any of them, you can put them in. Uh, some of the ones, uh, there's only a single answer, but these um, word games, the matching letters game, there's lots of possible answers. And the so count the lovely thing with the word game, Tony, is we were negotiating what the rules are. So the rules, you can determine your own rules, and there's a lot of thinking involved. There's a lot of strategy involved when you decide what the rules are. So that's a nice variation of it as well. Yes. I mean, all of these games, you have to start with deciding which rules to use. We're not giving you one game and one set of rules. We're giving you a whole collection of games. Um, generally, the pattern is the same. They're all working with a, a, a blank triangular frame and putting six numbers or words or six things into the boxes. Um, and if you get it right, and you, you, can, you carry on, but if you get right, everything's right when you reach the end. Both people get a point, but if you make a mistake, you lose a point, and it's it's not strongly competitive. But there's a there's you know you you, you want to you want to get it right, so you try. So Caroline, that's check it game. So so could we have a look at the the slide, which is all about moving from twenty. 20 to 2021 here we go okay oh, that's what not i meant to do let me change that that ticker tape so you can keep okay you keep going and i'll change the ticker tape right now what we're talking about here is reflections for the new year and there's a bit of a pun here because you see that there's a little bit of almost a reflection as if they were sitting on a mirror the words reflections for the new year but reflection is about thinking, thinking hard, thinking deep, and thinking, well, what's the significance of this? What did the, how does it matter to me? And what we've got in this picture is the sands of time for 2020 are running out. We've only got a few more days of 2020, and we'll be into 20, a new year, 2021. And as we move to the new year, what, what should we think about as being important for young people and their education? Now, if you're a parent, then I'm sure you want your children to, get, to have a good education. If you're a teacher, it's your job. If you're a grandparent, like I am, or a great great grandparent, you'll know, you'll think you'll know from all your experience that the better the education, the more likely those young people are going to get a job that they enjoy. When they have to have a job, when they're grown up, they want to get a job to earn money. A lot of people are in jobs which they find very boring. But with a good education, you've got more chance of getting a job that you enjoy. Now, the job I've had in my life, I've always enjoyed because I love maths. Well, it doesn't have to be, you know, being a maths teacher. There are hundreds of ways. And we also have some very good videos to show how maths is used in all sorts of ways that people perhaps don't think of in life and how having a good mass qualification behind them will help young people to get into some sort of work that they will enjoy. They will enjoy most of it, most, most of the time. Now, what's been happening this year is that young people, different ages, 
have missed out on education in some way or other because of COVID. All over the world, this has been happening. Schools have been closed. There's been online learning, but maybe the children didn't have the internet or a computer, so they couldn't um, they couldn't make use of that. Um, so, what do they need to catch up on? Well, they do need to catch up on what they've missed, but. Point number two is that in any group or school, uh, in, in the class at school, individuals have been out of school at different times. Because, well, as soon as there's a, a um, anyone in the household has COVID, the likelihood is that they that the child will have to stay at home until they're clear and then it's they're certain they're not going to be able to take that into they're not going to take that uh, covid virus into school and spread it around so uh, so children have been some children have been at home and some children have been at school and the cl the composition of the class changes so a one size fits all catch up won't work because in the class some children will have missed this bit of it, what they might have done or should have done earlier in the year, and other children will have missed other things, and everybody will have missed some of what they should have done because in almost every country, the children have been out, schools have been closed for part of the time. Now, the, the one size fits all is, you know, I'm gonna teach this lesson and everybody will be able to understand and learn it won't work if they haven't got the basics, if they missed out on something that they should, they need to know. So what we, I think we should be concentrating on is the skills. And this is what we were talking about earlier in this program, the skills of, of mathematical thinking, logical reasoning, teamwork, problem solving, communication. These are more important the specific subject content. So if we teach children these skills and playing the games is a good way of developing those skills, then they can apply the skills to any maths they have to learn and, and it, it's really important to understand. So in the new year, we should focus on teaching and learning that develops understanding and skills. And just to learn it by practice, which we've been saying this, check it game's very good for practice, isn't enough. Children actually need to understand why they're doing what they're doing. And we just showed the fractions. You've really got to be able to understand why those rules that somebody has told you you need to apply for multiplying fractions or adding fractions. Why does it work that way? And a good teacher will make sure the children actually understand why it works as well as being able to do it. So we're nearly out of time and I want to sh us show you a, um, a slide which is, which is, which is all about Christmas. Uh, this is the season of Christmas, but I know we've got people um, listening who are not Christians and people of different faiths and no faith. I hope you won't mind us showing this scene. Some wooden animals and a couple with a baby in the crib in Bethlehem reminding the Christians of the birth of Jesus, which is what we're celebrating at Christmas. So uh, we'd like to leave you with this and wish everybody, even if you're not Christians and this means nothing to you, just to share in the joy of families because this depicts in its way a family, doesn't it? Parents and a child or parents and grandparents and children. And this is what Christmas is all about. So whether it's... Um, Divine, and when we come to the new year, we wish you a happy new year as well for everybody. We wish you a peaceful, loving season, and we will see you next week, London time, five till six. Thank After you. Christmas. <laughs> After Christmas. <laughs> Thank you.